Oh, different animation. Oh, what's your anti-drug? Okay. <laughs> wasn't even a game that they had, uh... Wasn't even a game that they had advertising here. Alright, this is kind of weird. <laughs> Puffer fish that blows up tanks. Oh, pissed it off. Okay, that was weird. I get that they always went to end, um, they always went and put weird stuff in, but... I don't know, that was weird. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, the um, issue number 41, and it was released in February of 2001. I, at least that's what's written on the disc. <laughs> and I think this was an era where you started to see a lot of games being repeated, because... The PlayStation launched in 2000. The PlayStation 2, rather, launched in 2000. And the PlayStation 1, which they were stuck releasing discs for for a short time. For a few months, anyway. They weren't getting as many takers, I imagine. I don't quite know the story. But they weren't getting as many takers on advertisements. Because it was an advertisement, really. For releasing discs on the PlayStation 1 anymore. Oh, wow. This game's running kind of poorly. It's got to be an emulator issue, though. So, you started to see them, like, just putting out the same demos over and over again on discs. And, I mean, it was a bad time to be a subscriber. So, I kind of don't remember a lot of the discs of this era, because often, there are some of them, like, I never even put in my PlayStation. There was one that just had a bunch of um, Final Fantasy games on it. And it was just like there was a demo of eight. We'll get to this one. We'll get to it. But there was a demo of eight, even though they had already done a demo of eight. And eight had already been released. And it was like videos of other games. So I never even used it. I'll get to that disc, though. This is a Cool Borders 2001. I don't hear a soundtrack. I didn't hear a soundtrack. Usually these kinds of things have a soundtrack on it. Cool Borders 2001. I had fallen off the whole snowboarding game craze by this point. So I didn't even notice this came out other than this demo. And it honestly, it didn't really look any better than the last Cool Borders game that I had played. That was something I bring up a lot in this series, where you had these games that... Uh, the PlayStation 1 showed a huge gulf between the early games of the generation and the late games of the generation, because, well, developers learned a lot about the PlayStation in the process. But it feels like maybe it plateaued at least a little bit with Cool Borders, at least, there. Spyro Year of the Dragon. Did I have this demo already? I know I had a couple of Spyro games. There were a couple of Spyro games and... Um... Uh, Insomniac. Owned by Sony now. It's, it's amazing that they Sony never tried buying them out before. It's only a couple of years ago that Sony bought them out. Spyro was a game series I was never a huge... Okay, so there's three... There were three, um things here. I don't know if I'm going to play through all three. Spyro was a game series that I, I liked, but I was never a huge fan of. It's, um... The kind of... 
another studio, like an amazingly talented studio. Dougie dug to go ice fishing today, but Rhinox have blocked the path with ice, so I can't get through. I've been trying to clear the way with this cannon, but it doesn't even shoot straight. I haven't been able to hit a dang thing all morning. All right. Yeah, uh, Insomniac, uh, an extraordinarily talented studio, but one that, like, has never really quite... Well, maybe, maybe now they have, but, like, Spyro, they never really got the recognition they deserved, perhaps, or something like that. Because, I mean, they have Spyro here. So Spyro, great. Spyro's a great game series. Unfortunately, it was owned by Universal. It wasn't owned by... Um, Universal ended up owning the rights to it. So, like, what, what are they going to do? They just make Spyro games for another... Uh, for another company. And then Spyro ends up making an enormous amount of money because Spyro became the base for the Skylanders series. Which, I mean, it's bottomed out now. I don't know what to do here. Skylanders is bottomed out now, but it made an ass ton of money in its day. And Spyro was the base of that, but, you know, Insomniac didn't see a cent of it. And then they go and they... What was that um, Xbox One exclusive game? Uh, Sunset Overdrive? Great game, but it was released on a console that no one wanted. Not to say that nobody really wanted... Die, little bastard! Oh, okay. Not to say that nobody played the Xbox One, but it was not the big selling console of that generation. And it, I'm sure, didn't do as well as Insomniac had hoped. So they came running back to PlayStation, and Sony ended up buying them out. Spyro, on the other hand... Oh, shit. Another one of those games that doesn't look like it should be possible on the PlayStation 1. I mean, look at this. This, <laughs> this isn't something that I would have expected to see out of the PlayStation One earlier, or even looking at a lot of other what a lot of other developers were able to do with the machine. It just, uh... oh shit! <laughs> you know, I just noticed. I just noticed um, when that that attack animation hit Spyro that we're using vertex animations on this character model. It's another one of those things you didn't see a lot of in the PlayStation 1 on the PlayStation 1. Probably because of memory limitations. But I mean, look at his tail. Look at his wings. Look at his face. It's one large polygon mesh that we're looking at here instead of a number of different separate polygon models that are linked together with bones. And the way a lot of other developers would have done this, and a lot of other games did this in the PlayStation 1, is each segment of his body that moved relative to any other piece of its body would be a separate model just sort of sitting up against each other or uh, sort of clipping through each other. And, I mean, Resident Evil 1 did that, and then Resident Evil 2 had some vertex animations instead of... Um, just sort of polygon-based animations. And it looks really good, but... Uh, I mean, that kind of thing, you gotta... In your system memory, you gotta keep track of separate... Um, how the polygons relate to each other. How the vertices, anyway, relate to each other. I'm gonna jump into a different section. You gotta keep a track in memory how the different vertices relate to each other, so it uses up a lot more memory. I remember hearing about how um, Crash, Crash Bandicoot, that was a Naughty Dog game, did it. I don't know how, I want to know how they did it in Spyro the Dragon. I'm going to go back in and try one of those other ones. That was one of the things that they, that Sony did with the PlayStation 2. The PlayStation 2, although some developers complained about it was a complex machine, it and Sony had a kind of 
reputation for not really paying attention to what developers wanted. They told developers what they wanted. Like, oh yeah, you want uh, you want a complex quasi seven core CPU in the PlayStation Three? Yeah, well we'll do that, bro. Like, yeah, that's what you want. Why do you want it? Because we told you that's what you want. With the PlayStation 2, which, I mean, it's weird that I'm talking about the PS2 on a PS1 demo disc, but... Uh... No. <laughs> the PlayStation 2 was a machine that feels like they went and they... went and designed it based on a lot of the feedback of what developers wanted. So developers say, you know what, we want to do vertex animations. We want your machine to be better for vertex animations. So what Sony do, they put a couple of um, vector processors, a couple of vector coprocessors in with the CPU of the PlayStation 2. What's that good for? Well, vector processors are good for uh, doing, um, oh, it's a lock on. Ah. Blowing up a robot fish. Oh, that's not a fish, it's a submarine. Vector processors are good for keeping track and calculating vertices. Not quite how a modern process modern computer or game console would do it, but it definitely worked. They also say something like, oh, well a lot of developers say they like using post-processing effects or frame buffer effects or something like that. Well, what do we do? Well, we put high-speed memory in there and a really high fill rate. So, a lot of things like Silent Hill games and all that really took advantage of that kind of thing. Did, did I get it through the wall? <laughs> this is definitely a different kind of game. I don't remember this at all. A submarine portion of a Spyro game? Gives me the impression that the developers were getting a little bit tired of the routine of making Spyro games. Is there one more? Oh, there's two more. You know, honestly, this... Had this been fleshed out more, I could totally see this being a completely different, completely separate game. Like, an actual submarine game rather than just some sort of a mini-game in Spyro the Dragon. No, you bastard. <laughs> Get back here. Sink the Red October. Well, I'll be darned. You got some mean sub driving skills. Why don't you have this here egg as a reward? Ave? Egg. Ave. <laughs> Friggin' idiot. Well, I, I hate to ask your Harley the Dragon. Okay, yeah, more subs, but uh, let's let's jump out of Spyro. Holiday two thousand. This if this disc was February two thousand one, then this must have been a re-release of an old demo. Did I already play this demo in a previous episode of this series? <laughs> Crash Bash. No, I know I definitely played Crash Bash. Naughty Dog, the developers of Crash, and Insomniac, the developers of uh, Spyro the Dragon, are two studios which I felt like were very closely associated with each other. So much so that I kept... I always end up confusing games that one developed with games that the other developed. And it turns out that perhaps, um, perhaps uh, that made sense because the two were actually located in the same building for a while and, and uh, unofficially anyway worked together with some things. So, yeah. I mean, other than that, they're both tremendously uh, talented studios, and both of them eventually, anyway, ended up being bought up by Sony and other first parties. I also feel like they were both trapped in kind of a rut during the PlayStation 1 era, because they started something really great. They both started, well, I mean, Insomniac started Spyro, great series, 
Crap. Naughty Dog started Crash. Yeah, I definitely played this demo. Naughty Dog started Crash, but, you know, they made a lot of Crash games. And I remember people, as much as they loved Crash, people got tired of Crash after a while. Like, there were a lot of them. And I remember I, I remember going into a GameStop. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you bastard. Did I lose? I lost. <laughs> Just gonna have to watch this now. <laughs> I remember going into a GameStop, and I picked up some used game. And the way that they did things was that they would have the game, the box, sitting on the wall. And they'd take the actual game out. They'd take the actual game out and stick it in a little, little envelope instead of a drawer. And the guy going through looking for the disc I bought started complaining that there were a lot of crash games he had to sort through. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, there were a lot of crash games released, and a lot of people owned them, and when they got tired of them, they traded them in, and then GameStop ended up having this huge backlog of crash games no one wanted. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much what happened with Crash. People got tired of it. And maybe that's not just because Naughty Dog stopped being the developer, but maybe people just kind of got tired of it too many games, oversaturation, so it never really made the big uh, jump into the 64-bit era. By 64-bit era, I mean like the PlayStation 2. It's, PlayStation 2 was a 64-bit machine, even if maybe they didn't market it as that in the early days of it. What killed me, anyway? This weight thing? That doesn't make any sense. Whatever. <laughs> oh, gotta do it again. So maybe it was for the best that Naughty Dog didn't get stuck in developing Crash games forever. Hey, I won one. I kind of look at Naughty Dog that way now. Ever since the beginning of the PlayStation 3 era, they were doing uh, these 3D third-person, um, well, action platformer in the case of Uncharted. But they made a lot of Uncharted games. Then they did a lot of, uh, then they started doing The Last of Us. Now, like, I like The Last of Us, but they did two of those now at this point. One on the PlayStation 3, one on the PlayStation 4, and I'm starting to feel like... I don't want to see a Last of Us 3. I want to see Naughty Dog go and do something else. Because I know they're a great studio, and I want to see whatever they're going to put out. If they put out something new, that's... Yeah, that's what I want to see. I don't want to see a Last of Us 3. I don't want to see an Uncharted 5. Whatever they come up with, I'm sure it'll be great. I just don't want them to get stuck for another half decade releasing games. That's a terrible mechanic. How do you get out get around that? All right, let's get out of this. I don't want to see him doing the same thing over and over again. Insomniac is doing uh Insomniac is doing both Ratchet and Clank now, and the Spider-Man games. And it's like, oh, and I think they're doing a Wolverine game now, aren't they? I like Insomniac. The Spider-Man game, I'm not a huge comic book guy, or Spider-Man fan, or anything like that. It's a good game, you know. I just don't want to see him falling into the superhero rut. Ratchet and Clank was a game that came out of the PS2 era. But the new Ratchet & Clank game, eh, it's a great game. I've been playing it recently. I got my PlayStation 5 about a month ago. Haven't had a whole lot of time to get to, to get to use it yet. Here and there, though. One of the games I did get was Ratchet & Clank and the Spider-Man game. The two games that actually came with the package I bought. Both great games. Great games. But I don't want to see them get stuck in... What am I looking at here? Once again, presenting the controversial videotape received earlier today. From a mysterious dimension parallel to the Earth. Greetings to all round, fuzzy, squishy things. 
I am Colonel Cubicles, leader of the Bullion. We are speaking to you now to issue an ultimatum. Free the cubes. Free the cubes. Or taste our vengeance. You have 24 hours. We received this tape 23 hours and 50 minutes ago. What does it mean? Our expert joins us. Dr. Carl Cockerell, expert in crowd control and alien invasions. Carl Cockerell, the bullion? Should we be afraid? We should always be afraid, Hanny, whether a threat is real or not. If any stranger enters your area, remember to cluck hysterically, flap your wings, and run around in circles. We're chickens. That's what we do. We do. Thank you, Carl Cockrell. For New Center 12, I'm Henny Penny reminding you, if you want bread, you've got to help bake it. And I'm Chicken Little. The sky is falling. All right, I guess that's supposed to be funny. Mort the Chicken. That name sounds familiar, but I don't know what it is. I do have, like, the life bar is a... is a... ear of corn. I'm so used to more modern... Uh, more modern... His head turns all the way around. What the hell? I'm so used to more modern platformers where the right analog stick controls camera and direction. And the left stick controls sort of like forward and backward movement. So we're in like this weird little arena thing. Playing as a chicken. And we're avoiding these cubes. I mean, the, the performance of the game isn't very good. <laughs> that might just be an emulation issue. <sighs> that might just be an emulation issue. But, uh, perhaps it's, uh... <laughs> perhaps the actual game doesn't work that well. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Collecting these stars, maybe? Oh my god. Can I... Okay, so I just gotta avoid the cubes. And get the stars. That's, that's what I'm gonna assume my goal is. Mort the Chicken. I'm going to look this up later. This has got to be based on something, right? Oh, I... A chicken a combo tube. I don't know. Oh, it killed one of the, uh... It killed one of the cubes. I can definitely see this being a, uh... Oh, okay. Oh, it restored your health. I can definitely see this being something people actually enjoyed playing back then. But that time is not now. <laughs> this is not fun. <laughs> More of just an interesting look into one of the more obscure games. I imagine this is an obscure game. I don't... I don't Imagine there are people fondly remembering the chicken when talking about their PlayStation 1. What do the coins do? Okay, so maybe I'm not supposed to get stars. Maybe I'm supposed to get the eggs. That's not an egg. <laughs> oh, this is feed. Oh, restores his health. And then that little swirly thing, I don't know what that is. Die, damn you! Okay, it just pushes him off. Maybe the way it works is that the blue ones... The blue ones are just on, like, a set path, and the red ones will tra chase you? Or do I have that backwards? Oh, no, they're not chasing.
Oh, oh we got two chicks chasing me now. Three chicks. Oh my god, that thing's got some rendering issues. Alright, I'm getting out of this. This is <laughs> That is just bad. Wonder if that's based on like a cartoon or comic book or something like that. Y'all know Jack too. My first computer that I got was, it was, I, well, it wasn't my computer anyway. It was my stepdad's computer. He, um, I think it was like a AMD 486 machine. And he liked game, playing games on it, but by the time he came around, it was kind of an obsolete machine, so it couldn't play a lot of stuff. But one of the things that we could play on it was You Don't Know Jack. Press buzzer. What's the buzzer? Okay. You Don't Know Jack. It was a trivia game that me, my brother, and my sister would end up playing together. Twice, three times a nudie. One thousand dollars at stake on this one. It had a sense of humor to it, although it does seem a little juvenile by modern standards. I can't understand what he's saying. We'll break the rules this time, and I'll let you choose between three questions to answer. Okay. What's the 1988 what? album by the Talking Heads? Or what's the 1993 movie directed by Mike Lee? Or what's the 1996 book of stories by David Sedaris? Nude, naked, stripped, or bare? Fuck, I don't know. Okay, I guess you're one of those people who aren't really into movies, books, or music very much, huh? Got a different uh, announcer you here. Your clothes on, because if you didn't, you might have been reminded of this. The answer to each of those questions is naked. And if I may be allowed a brief moment of self-promotion, naked is also the title of my memoir, which will be hitting the shelves just in time for the holidays. When you think Schmitty, think stocking stuffer. Uh, okay. The category is going to be a place not in France where the naked ladies dance. I'm going to make this one a thousand bucks. Here's the question. Suppose you go to a Gaza strip club. What type of currency should you stuff into the stripper's G-strings? Jordanian dinars, British pounds, Israeli new shekels. Your Gaza strip technically belongs to Israel. Hey, I actually knew that one. <laughs> great. There are no rules. The women take off everything. Well, except for their veils. Some religious reason or something. I don't know. Um, what Ms. Jackson really means by control. Get this one right, you get a grand. All right, give me your best shot. Suppose Janet Jackson's famous Rolling Stone cover photo starts a fashion trend. How would the Janet Jackson bra be advertised? Supports, lifts, comes attached to a man. Cushions, protects, sings like a canary. Enhances, separates, plays fetch. Or cups, firms, keeps coffee hot. On her famous Rolling Stone cover, Janet's got a guy behind her with his hands on her breasts. And you know what? I'm thinking that guy got paid to do that. Yeah, and people think models are stupid. This one's called No Shirt, No Shirt. You know, I think they started making you, you Don't Know Jack games again. I think it, a few years back, there were a few releases. Where might the other students take extra time wiping the desk chairs before sitting down? Massachusetts Institute of Technology, University of Wisconsin, Madison, University of... I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Uh, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they even allow you to take all your clothes off in the shower. I... Well, that'll make an exciting... All right, let's get out of this. <laughs> Trivia games in a solo setting are not very fun. Star Wars Demolition. Okay, so this is definitely one I had a demo of a few episodes ago. Or maybe it was last episode. I don't keep track anymore. I do remember this is not a good game, though. 
So let's uh, spend a minute with it and then move on. It's a vehicle platformer, like a Twisted Metal, but not as good. Weird gloopy Java. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I should be able to do this a lot better now because I remember what I have to do to win. You can lock on, then you can go and charge up your shot and then blast him. And you can't tell him back here for some reason. Although I am getting chased, so maybe I should... Am I supposed to destroy this thing and collect stuff? Yep. Alright, I got two more to wreck. <laughs> Performance is terrible. Do I have to recover energy or some shit? Yeah, that's what I gotta do. Maybe this will help. Oh, no, nope, made me invisible. Wow, that one should be dead by now. Just sitting there all exposed and shit. Get back here. It's too floaty. Way too floaty. And I win. The controls are too floaty. It's like I'm driving around on ice. Not that the old Twisted Metal games are really all that good and, oh, there's something inside of that big box. The Jawa thing. Not that the old Twisted Metal games in the PlayStation 1 are really all that good in a modern context. But at least they're more playable than this. I mean, I now I got through this demo a lot faster than the last time I played it because I know what the hell I'm doing. But you sh it shouldn't feel like you're driving a boat. All right, we're loading. What's your anti-drug? We already saw that. Cool Borders 2001, so we are back where we started. Not the strongest disc. I mean, Cool Borders was a new game, I think. Um, More the Chicken was a new game. One very good. Crash Bash already saw. Spyro, maybe we already saw. I know I played Spyro games before. It may have been a new one. 
but by this point, Spyro. Eh, I'm getting a little long in the tooth, saw a few Spyro releases already. Uh, you don't know Jack. Uh, not a def It's You don't know Jack 2, so not even the first one on the PlayStation 1. And I'm a little tired of that. And some uh, anti-drug commercial. And Star Wars Demolition. <laughs> Not the strongest disc, but in the 2000, in the year 2000, you weren't going to see a lot of good PlayStation 1 discs. The official U.S. PlayStation Magazine discs really came back into their own in the PlayStation 2 era, but it would be a few more months before we started to see PlayStation 2 discs really come onto the scene. Hopefully, and I haven't found them yet, <laughs> hopefully I can find my collection of PS2 discs. Because there are a lot of great PS2 demo discs and I want to continue with this series. Anyway, thanks for watching.